That's unacceptable. Don't be ridiculous. I have no use for you anymore. You're nothing to me. Starting now, I won't give my money to someone as useless as you. I'm divorcing you. Take this and leave. I understand. I have no objections to leaving. Besides, we're just wasting our time talking to each other like this. Let's discuss the details with our lawyers at a later date, and I'll proceed with the divorce immediately. I left the house with the luggage I had prepared in advance. My name is Britt, and I am a mother of two children. My younger child has just graduated from university and started working. I am now seeking a fresh start in life. If we had been a happy couple, we might have thought of spending our older years together in peace. However, I have no intention of doing so because my relationship with my husband Stephen has already cooled off. But that doesn't mean our life was loveless from the start. I adored Stephen and respected him for his intelligence. I had dreamed of a bright future with him for the rest of my life. However, after 35 years of marriage, I discovered his true intentions. My husband saw me only as a tool to make his company grow. He started his own company during his lifetime. When we met, his business was already on the fast track. From the outside, it might have seemed like the perfect marriage. Ten years into our marriage, our first son, Joshua, was born two years later. Our second son, Liam, was born by the time my husband had shown his true colors. Two boys, Bridget, well done. Now my company's safe. I don't care which son, the better one can take over my business in the future. At first, I thought he was joking as he left and talked, but as soon as the children started to understand his worst. He demands his sons that they have to take over his company when they grow up. Parents should not take over their children's lives. That should not be allowed to happen. Stephen children have their own lives, so please don't make it sound like taking over the company is the only thing that matters in their lives. You don't understand anything, do you? It's natural for parents to make path for their children to follow. Of course, I don't disagree with that, but it's up to them to decide which path they want to take. All we have to do as parents are pushing them along, then my husband stare at me and scoffed, do you know why I chose you to marry me? What do you mean? Because you were the granddaughter of a tri-man of a con back. Financial connections are essential for a company to grow. Yes, of course. I'm aware of that. We married in an arranged marriage. I had understood very well that you saw some benefits in me. Wow. Not only that, you are by far the most brilliant woman I've ever met. I wanted to leave a good gene pool. If I'm going to have a wife, it's got to be a smartest one. If both parents have good genes, the odds are good that their children will have good genes too. So I can pass my company on to the best and brightest. Is that what you really want? Of course. What other reason did I marry you two years after my second son was born? I was very shocked to hear my husband said that. Of course, I was attracted to him because of his excellence, but that wasn't the only reason. Starting a company from the ground up takes a lot of hard work and determination. I respected him for the hard work he had put it in to achieve his goals. But the man in front of me saw me as one of the necessary ingredients to leave a good gene pool. My mind went dark all at once, but I couldn't stay in the dark. I have two children. I must raise them to be full-fledged adults. From then on, I worked hard to raise my children. It was complicated, but my husband was right. My children's intelligence was outstanding from an early age. Fortunately. My husband and I have aligned our interest. My husband wants to raise an outstanding successor to take over the company. I want to focus on my children's education. We each have our own agendas, but what it requires is the cost of education. My husband invested money in our children's education as if we were an upfront investment as a result. They have grown up to be the excellent university students that my husband wants them to be. 
Mom, will I work for my father's company when I grow up? My oldest son, who was in the early grades of elementary school at the time, once asked me such a question. Joshua, it is your life. Mommy wants you to do what you want to do when you grow up. As long as you can live without causing trouble for others, I would be happy with any work you want to do. Your life is yours. Remember that. Okay, honey. Okay then. Mommy, I can tell you my secret. I want to be. My eldest son has had a dream since he was a little boy, but he never talked about them in front of my husband. He was a smart boy, so I guess he knew his father would disapprove and so he fulfilled his dream. He passed the bar exam and became a lawyer after graduating from university. In fact, I used to stand on court as a lawyer myself from an early age. My eldest son was interested in my work. He is now very busy having set up his firm with a classmate. My husband at the time was furious with me and Joshua. You never told me you were going to be a lawyer. Why didn't you join my company? Did you have any idea how much I've spent on you? Quit the damn firm and joined my company. My husband was very upset. He just paid the money and left me to take care of our children's education and upbringings. He was so entrenched in his mindset that his children should be in his company. It's no wonder my husband can't understand what they want because he never interacts with them. Father, are you sure you want me to stop being a lawyer? If I can make a good record as a lawyer, there will come a time in future when I can help your company won't day. Besides, you are paying a lot of money for legal counsel now, even if I eventually join your company, I think it's better for me to be a strong lawyer now so I can contribute in the future. My husband's eyes lit up at this statement. However, my son has no intention of joining my husband's company. My husband seemed to look forward to his eldest son's joining the company, and he backed down easily at this time. I'm sure he was thinking of the benefits in the future, but there is another more important reason. This is existence of our second son, Liam. He too has a different direction of excellence than his older brother. My husband thought that Liam, who would graduate from university in two years would be in good hands if we joined the company because of his eldest son. My husband reminded his second son to make sure he would join his company. He was relieved when Liam said he understood my second son. Liam was a child with a strong personality. Even when he entered kindergarten, he did not join in the circle of other kids and did what he liked. But that doesn't mean he's uncooperative. He only spends his free time during recess in class. He was always in harmony with his peers. Liam, honey, what are you doing? When I picked him up from kindergarten, I found my second son on the playground. He was standing still with his forehead against a tree. Mom, I'm a tree now. That's why I don't understand human language. Oh, I see. But Mr. Tree, it's time to go home now. Can you get ready for that? Okay. He must have been a peculiar child to everyone around him. My second son was the type to do whatever he wanted to do. He was interested in plants and other living things from a very young age. He put a lot of effort into learning Chinese and Spanish. Because he wanted to read reports from overseas. After graduating from high school, our second son went to a university abroad to accumulate expertise. My husband was happy to see him. A multilingual business owner will take my company to the next level. That's why he stopped. However, upon graduating from overseas university, Liam joined a research institute in that country. Of course, my husband was not happy about this. You, that's not what you promised. Come back as soon as possible. He kept calling and nagging. Liam, Liam. What are you coming back? Um, soon, I guess enough. Listen to me and come back right now. I'll come home when I'm tired of studying. Knock it off, Liam. My husband was yelling at him in a terrible rage, and this wasn't the only reason for his outburst of anger. His company has been in financial trouble for a while now. 
He never talks to me about it, but my eldest son told me about it. I guess that's why he couldn't forgive his second son for betraying him. Frankly, I don't care what happens to my husband's company now that I've finished raising my children. Since our birth of our second son, my husband and I have barely spoken to each other still. I am grateful to my husband for his financial support that enabled me to raise my two children, but now that they have left the nest, there is no point in being with him anymore. I have been waiting for the right moment to divorce my husband. I've told my children my true intentions. They both respected my decision. Now I have nothing left to regret and the timing came surprisingly quickly. Bridget, I need to talk to you. Take a seat. Yes, there is a clear file on the table. It's an unfortunate way for our children to leave us. I thank you for your 35 years of hard work. Thank you too for financing their education. So let's take a moment to consider the rest of our lives, shall we? Yes. Let's. Well here I prepare the divorce papers. Of course, I'm not going to leave you penniless. I'm going to give you $30,000 for immediate expenses. What did you say? You can't buy back 35 years of my life for $30,000. What you bought a good life so far. Good life. What are you talking about? Every time you open your mouth, you urge your children to take over the company. They have their own lives. Shut up. I'm the one paying them. So it's only natural. That's not true. It is natural for parents to spend as much money as they can on their children, but it's not for them to follow the path that parents have set for them. It is for them to live a better future. I've never felt good to live with you because you think differently. Don't give me that bullshit. You are just grateful to get paid. Well, I'd like a properly calculated compensation. You are a business order. Remember, you are asking for $30,000 for my share of the property. That's insane. You've spent money on our sons. Sure. But I've taken care of everything. For you and them, whose support has allowed you to concentrate on your work so far without any problems. I believe that when we have fulfilled our obligations to each other, our property should be divided equally. Quit your nonsense. I'm not paying. Common property is to be divided exactly into, that's the low. I agree with the divorce. I have nothing to say about it, but I like to see the property calculated by the low. My husband's face turns red and he keeps yelling at me. Don't be ridiculous. That is unacceptable. You know what? I have no use for you anymore. You are nothing to me from right this second. I'm not giving my money to someone who's useless like you. I'm divorcing you. Take this and get out. I understand. I have no objection to leaving. Besides, we are just wasting our time talking to each other like this. Let's talk it over whether a lawyer at a later date, I'll proceed with the divorce papers. I took the luggage I had prepared and left the house. I went to my eldest son's house which is not far from my house. I see. So dad initiated the divorce. Well, yeah. Divorce is definitely in the cars. I lifted up the divorce papers my husband had presented to me. And then I look at the back of the paper and there is a sticky note. What's this? Oh, isn't this, I called Joshua and showed it to him immediately. I knew it. The rumors were true. Mom call the police. What? Why? Well, in this case, it should be the IRLS and the prospector's office. Don't worry, I'll call them myself. Mom, you called the police. It's important to leave a record that you have made a call. Oh, okay. You are right. And two weeks later, my husband was arrested for fraud. He had built the bank out of hundreds of millions of dollars under the guise of a new business venture. Then fearing the fraud would come to light. He ordered his stuff to destroy the documents. The note would stack to the back of the divorce papers. 
To me, he was a sinner, not a member of my family. The divorce was finalized and it's been a while. Of course, my ex-husband's company went bankrupt. He sold off all his assets to pay back the money. He had swindled from the bank, but he still couldn't repay the entire amount. I was worried about the effect on my eldest son because of his father's prison sentence. Rally. He became a hero for accusing his father, as for me. I was not paid my share from the penny list convict. To be honest, it was too big a deal for me to even think about it. My first and foremost priority was to refund the money to the fraud victims. I am not in the courtroom anymore, but I am helping my eldest son's firm as an advisor. I'm grateful to have a job again. After three years, my ex-husband was released from prison. Without hesitation, my children reached out to him and even brought him home. On the day of his release, he reportedly thanked them, but declined their assistance. I'm thankful to my sons for showing such kindness to their father, and I'm glad to hear he's now working to pay off his debts in his old age. However, my ex-husband's life and mine will never intersect again, and I hope this experience will lead him to reflect on his past. Though I received a letter from him through my eldest son, I chose not to read it, despite my son's suggestion. I believe what's inside the letter is an apology for our failed marriage, but I won't accept it. It's my small revenge for the 35 years of my life that were wasted. Nonetheless, I'm grateful to have raised two honest and decent sons, and I intend to live the rest of my life with integrity. Thank you for watching until the end, and please subscribe to our channel if you enjoyed it. We'll see you in the next video.